Good evening. Well, welcome to Stress Management in a Stressful World. And we are certainly in a stressful world right now. What we're gonna do tonight is just a short experiential learning workshop on developing a sustainable mindset, a more sustainable mindset. That means that you really should have a paper and a pen or pencil so that you can kind of jot down what your ideas are as we're going through this experiential workshop. So, love this picture. So here we're going to have an overview there. And what we're gonna be covering tonight is both the emotional and the physical effects of stress, some of the different types of stress that you might be experiencing, and then some coping techniques that might be helpful. So let's do experiential activity number one. What kind of stress do you think you have? I want you to list up to three stressors, events, people, or conditions in your work or in your personal life. So take a couple of seconds to do that. And then ask yourself, are they hassles, significant emotional events, or dangers? We're gonna discuss each one of those. First, we're gonna talk about the physical effects of stress and anxiety. Here we are. We have stress. This is a life situation that presents itself that we perceive to be stressful. And because of that, it makes us either want to fight or take flight. This then creates an emotional arousal, which can be fear or anger. And that then has a physiological uh, arousal that happens to us, which includes adrenaline or cortisol or endorphins, all of those things flood through the body. And then that has the consequences, the response that we have and the after effects, which is usually exhaustion. So let's take a look at the first type of stress, and that includes hassles. There are two reasons that hassles create stress. The first is we have irrational thoughts about those hassles. And the second is we tend to leap to conclusions. So all of us have goals and values, a vision of what, what we want to accomplish with our lives. And these are things that we hold very dear to us. So when they're interrupted, it's natural to have a really strong emotional reaction. However, we can choose to react rationally, which would lead to then being disappointed, or we might then react emotionally or irrationally, which can lead to awfulizing and that's thinking that this situation is, will never end. And then the second thing that happens to us is we tend to leap to conclusions. This can be things like uh, you have a personality difference with somebody, so they must be a terrible person. Or you have a medical problem, and that is gonna be a permanent thing that's just going to drag you down the rest of your life. Or you have political views, and those people who have differing political views are either evil or stupid. And then, especially relevant for us, you can be stuck at home. And then because of that, you can be going, you're gonna have to go stir crazy because you are stuck at home. And that's what you're thinking. So what can you do to cope with hassles? Well, the first thing you can do is to reframe you can shift your paradigm, take a look at it as a different point of view. You can accept the situation 
because to be perfectly frank, the situation is not going to change if you stress about it. And if you're stressed about a person, the person's not going to change if you're stressing about it. So you can reframe that. Or you can see the positive. You can look at delays as an opportunity and not a problem. You can do something useful with the new situation, or you can see the value in the person. I got this today. This is an example, a great example of reframing to shift your point of view about the situation. So I'll give you a second to read that. So as you can see, this is an example of awfulizing by our turtle, Fillmore, versus seeing the positive when you see it from a new point of view. The second thing you can do is break that downward spiral. You all know what happens when you get into a downward spiral where there's one negative thought and that leads to another and that leads to another and so on. You remember all the bad things that have ever happened regarding that topic. And then every time you enter into the downward spiral, which is often, you repeat those thoughts. And every time you do that, you make them stronger. So how do you break out of it? Well, there are three steps. The first thing is to tell yourself to stop. Stop the thought. Wear a rubber band, use the rubber band as a reminder. Think of three good things. Three good things that are a result of the situation. And then repeat it every time that you get into that downward spiral. And every time you do that, you're going to be making the, those thoughts stronger, making the connections with the thoughts stronger. What are you doing when you are doing that? Well, when you're in a downward spiral, every time that you go through that downward spiral, you're adding an extra layer of my myelin to the connections that are there. So you're making them like greased lightning and there's no way that you can get away from that. But when you think of those three good things, you are reprogramming your brain. So this is not a simple thing to do in terms of what happens in your brain. You're retraining your, your brain to create new traces. And the more you do it, the more those, uh, the stronger those connections get. Eventually, you retrain your brain to only think about the positives. Everybody's three good things are going to be different. So you may be thinking that it is a hassle to be stuck at home. But think of three good things that are happening as a result of this situation. It could be quality time with your family, or it could be a chance to get more exercise. Or in my case, down in the bottom there, it is to plant a victory garden. There are so many good things that you can find about your present situation, even if it's, uh, it doesn't look like it right now. If we're driving less, we, we're saving money. For those of us who care about the planet, we're also being more sustainable because we have a lower level of emissions. So think about it. What good things can you find? The final coping technique for hassles is the use of affirmations. You would be surprised at how much this can help. I find this first one particularly useful. You have to start from where you are and not from where you want to be. It's easy to remember. It's kind of uh, a little poem that you can say to yourself and remind yourself that, that it doesn't matter. You have to start from where you are and not from where you want to be. The second one is favorite of my husband's uh, and he uses it to help me when I'm running around and I'm forgetting things and dropping things and otherwise frazzled slow down and get there faster. 
And the last one, there might be a few of you who recognize this as a mantra that's used by AA or Al-Anon. It says, when you are feeling overwhelmed, you just pause for a second and then ask yourself, what is the next right thing to do? And that can be really useful. The second type of stress we're gonna take a look at is life stress. And the first thing we're gonna do is an experiential activity number two, life events and stress. And you're gonna find out how stressed you are from real life events. We have this complete life changes index. And it's two slides and you can see that there's uh, very high points for a lot of these and then it goes down in the second page, there are some of the lower, but each one of these adds to your stress. And you can pause this here and take a good look at it and kind of jot down the numbers that you have. These are ones that you might be experiencing right now because of what we're going through whether it's your own illness or the health of a family member or a change of the way that business is being done or a change in the financial states. You can see if you have several of these, you quickly add up to over a hundred. And this is our second page and they're smaller, but they add up. And it can be, it doesn't even have to be a negative change. It can be a change in residence or recreation but these are some of the things that might be happening to you right now. Change in responsibilities at work. A revision of your personal habits. You can't go out. You have to keep a distance and all of that. Change in your work hours or conditions and a change in the social activities. Research shows that if you have more than uh, 150 points, between 150 and 200 points, you have a 37% chance of getting an illness or a disease in the next year because you're just so dragged down. Between 200 and 299, you have a 51% chance. And if you have over 300 points from this life uh, event scale, then you have a 79% chance of getting sick. You have to deal with the stress. So what are some of the coping techniques that you can do? Well, the first thing is something that I learned in the Air Force. I actually was reminded of this the other day when uh, Mike Rowe, the famous guy from Dirty Jobs, uh, described our reaction that he was noticing to the situation as being very similar to what we go through in the grief cycle. He's right. Many of us started out this stay at home cycle in shock and denial. Now it's very possible that we could be angry or bargaining and maybe, maybe we'll get on our way to acceptance and recovery but it doesn't have to be this way. We can interrupt this cycle with this technique that I learned in the Air Force. It works for any time that you have a change that you might prefer that it not be happening. And so instead you use the positive adaptation cycle. And that's the upper line there. The first thing is to interrupt the grief cycle, we need to first process our feelings. Many of you have had to adjust to your working conditions, uh, new working conditions are being laid off. That can be really scary. It's natural to feel anxious or unhappy. So we need to process those feelings. We need to, to uh, talk about them. We then need to acknowledge that there is nothing wrong with the old way that we did things. We had a job, we could go shopping, we could travel, we could send the kids off to school, but now we have a new context. In this case, the stay-at-home order, 
we have to stay safe, so we need to stay at home. Or it could be that you have to go out into this scary world because you have an essential job. Then we reaffirm our values. Our values haven't changed. We want to do meaningful work to support ourselves and support our families. So now we have to focus on the future and look for opportunities right where we are. And we need to sit down and create an action plan to move forward. Another way to deal with life stress is something called progressive relaxation. We're actually gonna try this, but let me go over a couple different ways you can do it first. First, the full-blown uh, version is that you find a quiet place, stretch out on the ground, start with one muscle group and tense it and relax, tense and relax, and then add another when the first is relaxed and you progress through the body. The short version is to identify any muscle group that feels tense and tense it further and then relax that muscle group and focus on the feelings of relaxation. So experiential activity number three is our relaxation routine. First thing I want you to do is to scrunch up your face. Scrunch, 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 scrunch. And then relax it. The next thing is to put your arms out and tense them, really tense them. Feel that tension. And then relax. The third is to tense up your shoulders. Tense, tense, tense. And then relax them. And then put your legs out, flex your, your feet and tense up your legs. Get them really tense, really tense. And then relax. And the final thing is to breathe in relaxation and then breathe out tension. This is a really great relaxation activity. The final type of stress that we face is rational stress, and that is danger. We may be facing real threats, especially if we have to go to work as an essential worker or we might be immunocompromised and worry about going to the store for essential shopping. We've got to do it. These are real threats that we are facing right now. So what are some of the coping techniques for those? The first is to prepare. We in Florida are used to doing that for hurricanes and other natural disasters. We need to be more resilient. And we know that the way to do that is to prepare. So create a plan for how you're gonna deal with the next few weeks, especially if we get even more restrictions. Or what's our plan when they start relaxing the restrictions? Because there still will be precautions that I would suggest that we need to take. So sit down today and see what you think that you will need. And if you've been going to the store, you know that there are a lot of empty shelves. So look up some alternatives like homemade hand sanitizer or soap, which we've now been hearing and we now know is actually much better than hand sanitizer. The second technique is to solve the problem. We know what needs to be done for the immediate future. If you're watching here today, you probably already know uh, and you're probably already being good about th some of these things. But some of you have some additional problems that you're facing. I talked to someone today whose internship program was terminated. And so he was already looking for work. There will be a pent up need 
when these restrictions are lifted. So we can use this time to prepare to develop new skills that will be needed to finish our degree, to get another certification. As an aside, I am giving a LEED Green Associate Test Prep Workshop in May for folks that are interested in working for innovative companies that are trying to make buildings more sustainable. But don't stop there, go to the next step and get LEED AP. That'll really put you above the majority of folks out there. And it's not hard to do. If you have any other shortfalls, take care of them now. So as we get to wrapping up here, I want you to think about what we've been talking about. And I want you to think about what you're going to do. Choose one to three of these, and this will be our final activity. I want you to write down those things that you think will work for you. And remember that these things can work for any kind of stress. Reframing or breaking the downward spiral or affirmations can also work for life stress. Progressive relaxation can also work for hassles. And solving the problem can work for anything. So all of these are useful tools. What resonates for you? And being an optimist, I do believe that our sunnier days are ahead. I hope you found this useful. I'll see you in, online in class. For some additional resources, uh, St. Pete College has got some excellent things and we can send them out to you. There's two that are called, one of them is uh, 211, Get Connected, Get Help, Tampa Bay Cares. And then St. Pete College has Project HEAL, which is Healthy Emotions and Lives, Student Health and Wellness Resources. And you can uh, go to St. Pete College and get these, or I can, and I can send them out to you. So have a great day. Stay safe. <laughs>